Hello again, and welcome back to the Real Life Pharmacology Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to cover metaclopramide, brand name Reglan. But I do want to remind you that we've had almost a thousand people now uh, take advantage of our free top 200 study guide on a real life pharmacology.com. So definitely go there, free download once you've subscribed to the podcast and really uh, just send update weekly updates usually on when a new podcast uh, is available is primarily what we send out there. So definitely go check that out. It's a perfect tool for uh, before final exams or board exams, just kind of going through each of the top 200. And I pull out three of the most important things you should know uh, from each uh, medication there. So go check that out. Uh, let's get into metoclopramide a little bit. Uh, starting off with the mechanism of action, and the mechanism of action is going to be really, really important. So this drug blocks dopamine uh, and can have some serotonin um, receptor activity as well or blockade as well. Now, the primary mode of action or where this happens is in the chemoreceptor zone, which is important in regulating the sensation of nausea and vomiting. So you could imagine that if we're trying to target that area mechanistically, we're trying to uh, reduce or improve somebody's symptoms of nausea and vomiting. And indeed, that is one of the common uses of metoclopramide. Now, one other use with this medication is gastroparesis. So gastroparesis is basically the slowing down of the gut motility. And nausea, vomiting, stomach upset can result because of this. Probably the most common patients that I see in real life with this problem have diabetes. It's one of the complications of diabetes. And we've covered a lot of diabetes medications already so far, so uh, definitely go back, scroll back through the the previous podcast. You'll um, find some some good stuff there. Uh, With that dopamine blockade, that should help you think about adverse effects. And primarily one adverse, one or two adverse effects I think of with that dopamine blockade so extra pyramidal symptoms. So if you go back to the antipsychotics uh, podcast, well, I talk more about that. But because of that bl- dopamine blockade, that can lead to movement disorder type side effects. One other one that can happen is elevated prolactin levels or hyper hyperprolactinemia. Uh, sedation can happen with this medication. There are tons and tons of meds uh, that can certainly cause that. Gynecomastia is a, a rare one. Um, I personally haven't seen it in real life, but I know it, it is one that um, can potentially contribute to that. Uh, the classic, classic example is spironolactone um, that can cause gynecomastia, but uh, metoclopramide uh, definitely can, at least according to the uh, side effect profile. With that dopamine blocking activity, we've got to look out for any type of extra pyramidal, uh, tardive dyskinesia type movement symptoms. Um, again, with that dopamine blocking activity, I keep an eye out for patients who may be already predisposed to problems like that. So I work a lot in geriatrics. I see a lot of Parkinson's patients. You've got to remember that metoclopramide reglan can exacerbate that. One downside um, to metoclopramide, uh, especially if you're going to schedule it, is it does need to be dosed multiple times per day. So if you you know, have worked with patients at all, understand that the more often we dose something on a chronic basis, the more and more likely that it is for patients to be adherent uh, to that medication. So again, three to four times per day is usually how it's dosed. I have seen this medication used as needed PRN. Um, so keep that in mind as well. Now, I talked about that dopamine blocking activity in Parkinson's disease. 
And I've actually got a case scenario written up and spelled out in my newer book, The Thrill of the Case. You can find that on Amazon. Again, The Thrill of the Case, uh, Drug Interactions, Clinical Pearls. Uh, it's over a 200-page book, so very, very useful to them if you're working in clinical practice or if you're going to be in uh, working in clinical practice. So again, Thrill of the Case on Amazon. I've got a case study um, in there, a little clinical vignette on Reglan and Parkinson's disorder that you're going to want to check out and hopefully uh, you can help uh, learn something from that. Now getting into drug interactions, I'm going to focus on uh, the mechanism here for a couple of drug interactions. So the first one I always think about is if I see Cinemet or other Parkinson's type medications, I've got to recognize that metoclopramide or Reglan can potentially blunt those effects or block the effects of that Cinemet. So definitely keep that one in mind as far as um, drug interactions. And like I mentioned, I've, I've got a, a case scenario uh, spelled out in the thrill of the case there. Now the second one I wanted to mention was if you add on metoclopramide or Reglan to other dopamine blocking meds. So there are other antiemetics that have dopamine blocking activity. So meclizine is a good example there. Or if you've got a patient with mental health disorder. So bipolar, schizophrenia, and they're on an antipsychotic, keep in mind that the antipsychotic will block dopamine just like Reglan will. So you might put that patient at higher risk for movement disorder side effects, those EPS type symptoms. Uh, hyperprolactinemia may be a little bit um, more likely to happen as well because of the add on effect of that dopamine blockade. Now, one other one is kind of a, a an opposition um, type effect to maybe what we're trying to treat with metoclopramide. So, with one of the common uses, gastroparesis, the slowing of the gut, Reglan helps to potentially speed that up and alleviate some of those symptoms. Now you've got to look in the medication in the patient medication list and see if patients are on anticholinergics. Anticholinergics can slow down the gut. They can cause constipation. And they can oppose some of the effects from metoclopramide. So some older anticholinergic meds that I think of, uh, those old antihistamines, so you've got uh, Atarax, Hydroxazine, um, Benadryl, which is diphenhydramine, uh, Doxylamine, another one that's in uh, common over-the-counter cough and cold preparations. These can slow down the gut and kind of act in opposition to the effect that we want metoclopramide to have on our patients. So kind of a, another drug disease slash interaction uh, that I think you, you should be aware of. Well, I think that sums it up for today. Uh, if you like us where you're listening, leave us a kind review, a rating on iTunes, Spotify, uh, wherever you're listening to us. Uh, greatly, greatly appreciated and um, helps us grow the audience and always share us with a friend too that free giveaway uh, that's for anybody to have uh, it's intended to be a useful tool uh, to help you prepare passport exams things of that nature so reallifepharmacology.com check out that free top 200 study guide i'm going to sign off for day thanks for listening thanks for the ratings reviews uh, incredibly appreciative uh, of all the support